Meu nome é Cairo Santos e eu sou o kicker e único brasileiro jogando na NFL. Cada chute, cada jada conquistada, cada passo me levou para mais perto dos meus sonhos. Agora, a cada 200 reais em compras com seu Visa cadastrado, você tem a chance de ficar mais perto do sonho de assistir ao Super Bowl 59. E usando o seu cartão de débito, você ainda concorre a prêmios diários de até mil reais. Não importa o tamanho do seu sonho, dê o primeiro passo. Visa, apoiando seus passos aonde você quiser chegar. Everything you learned in history class was a lie. Well, maybe not everything, but they skipped the best parts. Introducing Stupiracy, where stupidity meets conspiracy. Ever heard of the Olympic marathon that nearly killed its runners? Or the time a pope put another pope's corpse on trial? Join me, Scott Rizzuto, and Tim McKernan as we uncover the most outrageous historical moments and mind-blowing conspiracies you won't believe actually happened. Tune in to Stupiracy for your weekly dose of historical absurdity. Available wherever you get your podcasts. Remember, history is dumb, but laughing at it is smart. And now, live from the TCL Broadcast Studios, it's Joe Suchere and Patrick Royce with Sports Talk. Uh, St. Thomas nipped Trinity Lutheran. Trinity International. Trinity International. It's a... Uh, they got a bunch of these little Bible-type schools in Chicago area, and mm-hmm. uh, they're one of them. And the week before, they'd scored, they'd won a 70-50 to 50 shootout against somebody, or a 50-40 to 40 shootout. Trinity did? Somebody. Well, St. Thomas they're, they're, nipped them 76-7. to 7. Well, they're an NAI school. They're a small NAI school, and that's kind of like this UMAC league that we have here that's a Division three league. But they got Martin Luther and uh, Crown College and all these small little Christian schools in it, and uh, yeah, they beat them bad. Well, and I they heard. showed some, and they clo- and they opened the gates of mercy too. You're saying? I'm hearing that uh, the team took a knee, took a knee rather, rather than score. Than score. A and I'm also hearing that they called a fair catch with five minutes to go to keep it somewhat well, under control. Well, but you do that now on the kickoffs if you want to. Well, but, they've changed the kickoff but, rules. But presumably, he wouldn't have needed to call a fair catch. Otherwise, oh, it would not have been near. pointed out to me. Oh, that there was nobody near him and he but, fair caught it anyway? Well, and I don't know all the details, but that it strikes me that to, that's more embarrassing to the opponent than scoring. Oh, yeah. I've always said that uh, one of the great moments in Gopher history was I was at a Nebraska game. And this was after, this was four, three or four years after, oh, more than that, five or six years after the uh, 84 to 13. Mm-hmm. And it was 42 to 0 oh, mm-hmm. late in the first uh, half. And Nebraska was inside the Gopher 20 and they knelt down twice. Mm-hmm. Of course, it served its purpose for the uh, sports columnist who could write about the Gophers' valiant goal line stand here against Nebraska. So, I think they only lost that one fifty-six to nothing. So, I'm sure uh, Caruso. Uh, I'm sure he played everybody's got. Oh yeah, right? they do. And at home, they get to play them all. But he, I think he did play his regulars the first half, and I don't blame him for that. You got a first game of the season. It's just here's their problem. You got Division Three is more imbalanced than even big time football. Mm-hmm. You know, you got Ohio State, Alabama, even big time football. But they have this playoff system where if you lose a second game in the year, uh, like if you play somebody tough non conference in the opener, and then you pretty much have to go unbeaten through your conference in order to make the playoffs. Mm-hmm. They should start giving teams credit for scheduling. And then St. Thomas could play Mount Union in a non-conference game to start the season. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's about 20 of them that are on the same level, Mm -hmm. 25. And they should be playing each other to start the season. You know, Mount Union. Hey, Mount Union's coming to town. They'd have a overflow crowd. They could play it somewhere. And then you go out there and play them once. They're the powerhouse Go play some of the powerhouses, but then the Division Three selection committee's got to put an asterisk next to that defeat, you know, mm-hmm. and say, okay, if they're the, you know, if they if they lose a game in their conference, that's the fine. They can still get a uh, a spot in the playoffs, but uh, they have, you know, they got. I think they got a thirty-two team bracket for three hundred and some colleges, and 
So they 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 put these teams in a position to run up scores against bad teams. So, well, it's happening with frequency. Yeah. Well, the, the big problem is not him beating t- uh, uh, Trinity International seventy to whatever. The big problem is doing it to Hamlin and Carlton, and and I'm not saying that that they're they're being outrageous with it, but if they keep beating Hamlin and Carlton sixty to nothing, pretty soon those two schools are going to say, "Ah, we're going to do what McAllister did. We're going to go not play MIAC football anymore, mm-hmm. and you're going to end up with a six team conference." Mm-hmm. You know, so they got to. That's the the bottom end of their own conference is what they got to worry about. Carlton and uh, and uh, uh, Hamlin, and then you know, there's a. St. Olaf's really bad right now, too. I wonder if it'll get to the point where some of those schools just drop football. Yeah. Why in the hell is Carlton playing? Well, a lot of a lot of this yeah, I don't know. They've they've been doing it for hundred and you know, they beat the Gophers once in eighteen ninety three yeah. or something. I don't know why they're doing it. I can't tell you. But uh it's 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 you know, certainly uh the pressure on there wasn't much pressure on St. Thomas to leave the MIAC or they belong in a higher league or anything when they were winning and everything else. Mm-hmm. But since they started killing teams in football, it's become a big issue. So, Where does golf go next? The, the title match in Georgia? No, they're out here. Uh, they're out in the Midwest, the BMW. Oh, in, in Chicago? Wherever it is. I'm yeah. not sure where it is. But and who advances here. to the BMW? The top? 70. Top 70. 70, yes. 70 go there. Next year, this week's tournament yep. won't be held. It'll be 125 to 70 to 30. Okay. Right now, it's 125 to 100 to 70 to 30. Okay, and so next weekend, we go to 30. And yep. they show the, up in, the, in the Georgia. The championship is yeah. uh, in Georgia. Yeah. Yeah. Is it this week, or are they taking a break now? Or do they know. take a break before? The, there's, there's one. They take a break one of these weeks. Eldrick Woods finishes... A round of competition like Ron Davis used to finish baseball games. That's my uh, theory. He's the worst closer since Ron Davis. He cannot finish. Will you admit that, Tiger fan? Me? Yes, he can't finish. Yeah, I'll admit he's it. 10 under. He's right there. And a minute later, he's 7 under. I, know, I, I admit Can't it. finish. Pressure gets to him. Who would have ever thought Tiger Woods would be a choker? But he is. Well, he never used to be. No. But he's I'm getting becoming, your answer. I'm getting your he answer. He has doubts now. I'm getting the answer. Okay, here. good. Uh, now, when we go to the podcast, are we going to have the same crack computer? Are we going to get the boy a new one? I think we're going to have I the think, same. I think the staff. Why not do I think the, the same? podcast staff should provi- should get the the mayor to pop we're for going, a new computer. Uh, I think so. We're think going old working. school. We're going to get 20 newspaper subscriptions, <laughs> yeah, okay. a dictionary, a thesaurus, that's and good. a Bible. That's, and that's good. It. That's good. We're going to have to good. build a show the way that's we good. used to do it. Some guy, some guy wants to send me like a million tapes right from the beginning. Yeah. And I said, Sid's got the only tape recorder left in America, and he's not going to let me use it. What am I going to do? Sit around and listen to him? What'd you okay. find, Such? Okay, the uh, they're not taking a week off. We're going right to the BMW, and it's not in the Chicago area. It's at uh, Ramanink in Philadelphia. Oh, really? Huh. Aron, Aronimink. Aronimink Never is an of old, old, Never heard traditionally uh, great golf course. Yes. No week off. Mm-hmm. Okay, all right. Well, we got that straightened out. Uh, and twins, uh, I'm done. They got. They're never going to get. It. I thought I held out the unreasonable hope, Pat, that they were going to hit 500. They can't do it. <laughs> Last night. Now they have an interesting theory here. One reason they kept Buxton. They're not going to bring up Buxton. They said they just don't have at bats available, even if he were to come up. <laughs> Yesterday they started an outfield. That the fair bowl Lakers wouldn't take. No, we wouldn't he take wouldn't field. Lie. No, Robbie Grossman. Jake Cave, who's the star of the group, and Johnny Field, whoever the hell he is. But we don't have room for Buxton. No. I should ask Patrick my question of last hour. Patrick, uh, is it possible for you to ever, ever watch a Twins game without getting emotionally involved? Oh, yeah. Yes, I was was very emotionally involved on Saturday, though, because, (laughs) Kenny, I hate the opener concept that you start a relief pitcher. I hate that. Right. 
So when they started a little slot ball in the left and he immediately launched a 700 foot home run, I was so damn happy I couldn't stand it. Oh, you got you got involved. He was a contrarian. He went contrarian the wrong way because it was stupid. It's yeah. stupid. And they gave up eight. The first time they broke out the opener, they held them to 18 runs. How's she working so far, boys? But you would have chuckled mightily had New Mexico State somehow upset the Gophers. You would have chuckled. But I hadn't. I hold out. I, I didn't think that was in the realm of possibility. Right, right. Or San Francisco upending the Vikings. I don't. I didn't tell you guys this, but on uh, what day was that that we had the, uh, row, row, the boat row the boat lady out there? Row the boat guy. It was. A, it was. A, it was a lady. It, it, and it was a, a young lady in her twenties, and she loud. She hung around so you would see the t-shirt. Oh, oh you're that. talking about the t-shirt. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was talking and then, about the guy with the cookies. And then as soon as it got uh, mentioned, and as soon as you saw it, she took off and actually. I didn't see her. She no, you saw her because you and Such spent the first ten fifteen minutes talking about the program. And um, and as soon as uh, you got on the air, she went to the game. And I actually went out there and I thanked her family for making her stick around and making you see, uh, I okay. think Such saw it, see that. And it gave us 10, 15 minutes of free programming. And, it was really easy. You, then later you enraged. On, later on, we had the row the boat guy. Who this, had two guy, handmade signs. He had two handmade signs. And he just sat in the background and yelled, row the boat. Except the first day, Thursday... Right before 6 o'clock, he was out there with a bucket of cookies the size of his fat head <laughs> and said, roll the boat. And I said, hey, they're kicking off. What the hell are, are you doing here? Yeah. Well, what kind of yeah. fan are you? Yeah, you should be down here rolling the boat. Just a moment. Freddie Zamberletti was the trainer. Well, officially 03, but uh, I think they brought, uh, they gave him a different title in about 98. They brought brought somebody else in and he kind of did the day to day, and Freddie was the and supervisor. The, and the historian. Well, they made him the historian. Yeah, that and, sounds like a made up role just well, to appease a lot poor of teams Freddie. Are, you know, a lot of teams are doing that, though. Yeah. A lot of teams, when they take a venerable off. Freddie had this streak of. Uh, never missing any I was, game. I was going to bring that over up. Over a thousand. I read. So. I read today's piece, and you were quoted extensively for a piece you wrote yesterday. And uh, the question: Do you look back at your career and admit that you missed the birth of three of your kids, and you missed this, and you missed that, and you missed all, all of this, all of these things, these milestones in his life he missed because he was at the game or at at the office? Is that is that good? Was he happy yeah, about was, that? that? If was I the look back, then if I look I mean, back at my life and said I missed all these things, I think it would bum me out for work. Here, here's what I want to know about him. I don't think he was bra- ever bragged about it. I think he but just that, a fact. That was the way the commitment was back yeah. then. You know, here's uh, what I want to know. He started so long ago. Did he? Was he trained? I mean, oh yeah. I mean, we've had kept, some he, trainers in town. You know, they used to have a, a towel and some tape, and he yeah. kept modernizing, smelling salts. You know, right. He kept modernizing. But ben Gay, but he he kept his attitude about uh, what a training room should be. I had some somebody was telling me that he saw the new facility out here. You know, with this massive training room. Mm-hmm. And he get he comes out of it. And he says, "Too many chairs." He says, "He says these guys will be sitting around in their BS." And Freddie would only have a few chairs. Yeah. You know, he'd go out and play cribbage with them during the break. Yeah. But he didn't want it to be a gathering spot. I know? loved his attitude on how he got guys to play. Guys that would ask for time off, or who was the player that actually had a separated sternum? Which player was that? Oh, it was in today's remember. piece. And Freddie said, "Just go out there, and and they had to tape them up, you know, yeah, and hold give them a to, shot. hold them together. Yeah, just go out there and see what you can do. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> see, you know, and and that was inspiring to these uh-huh. guys. But that is old school. Yeah. I always found him to be very affable. Oh, great guy. Yeah, love to be us. Mm-hmm. But he'd uh, he uh, he'd also play opera music in the trainer's room to keep him out of there. You know, so they, <laughs> you know, they'd come in there. He's a big opera fan, and he'd." Uh, the what? best part of the best thing I learned out there Friday, I love this. As uh, you know, I've, I was out there Friday morning, and he was he, he was he wasn't comatose because his eyes would react to you, but he couldn't speak, and he was yeah. and he was nearing the end. But like a week earlier or so, 
he was in a, they put him in a wheelchair and they were, and he hadn't said much in a few days and he was being wheeled down to get tested and he broke into, uh, I wonder what the king is doing tonight from Camelot. He started, really? He started singing, <laughs> I wonder. It had been going through his head and they'd oh, been playing it for him in there and stuff fantastic. like that. But he was a guy that you always, when you you know, when you went to Winter Park or Mankato, you wanted him to amble over and oh, yeah. start BSing with you. Yeah. Yeah, he was. Well, plus, he knew stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, he did. He did. He was. Was uh, he ever an, an unnamed source for you, Patrick? Not really. No, I mean, I didn't. He was. No, okay. I, I wouldn't say that. No, all right. No. Now, I I did write a little blog about how he wants all the times I gave the Vikings crap. He never said much. What. I mean, when I used to tease Ahmad, he'd kind of chuckle about it. But because, oh. you know, Ahmad had this yeah. massive ego. Right. But I wrote, wrote something critical about Anthony Carter. And I don't even know why I was still in St. Paul or in Minneapolis, but the phone rang in the office one day. And it was Freddie calling from the trainer's room. And I said, Hey, Fred, what's up? He says, I got to tell you this. You're wrong about Anthony Carter. And then he hmm. told me about blah, 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 what a warrior he was, how all beat up and he was playing. And I said, Zambi, if you tell me I was wrong, I was wrong. Yeah. And I won't do it again. Did he well, have a... It doesn't work around here with you. Yeah. Right? <laughs> no, no, no. That's all we do Nobody is tell around you. here I trust. <laughs> uh, did he have a favorite or least favorite coach? Les Steckel, Joe, uh, Burns? I don't think he would ever tell you that. Uh, no, I... You have I, any I, run-ins? Like a favorite kid, huh? Any run-ins with any coaches or management? I or? really don't. I mean, Bud and Burns. And, you know, Kenny... Even in the early years of Bud, it was such a small operation. Yeah. There was like six assistants. Yep. Fred had one assistant, and there was two equipment guys, and it was you know five scouts, and they were all they every all these teams now like to talk about family. That was a family because there was about thirty of them. Yeah, total counting PR guys. Was well, Dennis Ryan still the equipment? Yeah, guy? Yeah, Dennis still. Well, he's no. been there no. for fifty years. And Zambi basically, no, not that long. Zambi got him the job. Basically, he was a nineteen or twenty year old kid when Stubby Eason mm -hmm. retired, the original equipment guy, and and Zambi went to. Uh, I think Bud by then and told Bud he said that it wasn't Bud it was somebody up above and said, hire this kid. Mm -hmm. He's the real deal. He mm -hmm. said, and the guy said, are you sure he's a kid? He says, yeah, I give this guy the job, and Dennis still has it, yeah. I always thought it was cool that uh, Tommy Zamberletti, his son, was uh, got to be the ball boy. Yeah. <laughs> We'd always watch for him on the sidelines <laughs> as, a young, as a young kid. Yeah. He yeah. lived right in the middle of Highland Park. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he, uh, he was... Uh, I didn't realize, I knew he was a little tight with the buck, but they were uh, telling some great stories about how cheap he was. You know, he was just like Bud. His his one uh, daughter, uh, Lori, told me that he used to have a connection at Old Dutch. I don't know if you guys read this. So he'd get free potato chips, oh. big potato chips. And he said... He didn't really like potato chips that well. He just wanted to tease Bud that he could <laughs> he get, that he for could free get free for another show. Oh, that guy was <laughs> so awesome. It was, it was, it was, it was basically a contest to see who he could. just drops him off at the local pig farm so somebody enjoys it. But then he calls Bud. <laughs> That's awesome. There were, many flights, flights, there were many flights home where I saw coaches stuffing their pockets with rolls to take oh, yeah. off the plane. Well, I mean, there's some Bud guys used to go teeth. back through and uh, take the old wrapped up sandwich and then feed them to the dogs when he got yeah. home. So. <laughs> uh, we'll they be back. We'll be back with more sports in a moment, but now thanks to uh, our good friends in Owatonna, Minnesota at Federated Insurance, where it's their business to protect your business. It's uh, who we have in Rook? We've got Rasa K. Rasa K. And your money now. He's so Hi, used Rasa. to saying Bruce Vale all the time that we do appreciate you pinch hitting Rasa. Oh, uh, you know, it's like that first day of school my whole life, you know? They're going through the <laughs> attendance roll, and then there's a pause. It's like, yeah, I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> You're a good sport. Thanks. Well, gentlemen, the S&P and the NASDAQ are coming off their fifth positive month in a row, while the Dow is gained for two straight months, but trade tensions and Nike slump weighed on the major indices on this first trading day of September. Stocks closed months. Modestly lower with the Dow off 12, the Nasdaq sliding 18, and the S&P losing 4. Now about Nike. Colin Kaepernick hasn't played in an NFL game since the 2016 season, but he did just sign a star endorsement deal with Nike that'll earn him the same kind of millions as if he did. The Twitterverse already filled with images from irate fans burning their Nike gear in protest a day since the news broke, and it seems there was some investor backlash as well. Nike share all closed 3% lower today. Well, construction 
construction expenditures were a tenth of a percent higher in July than in June, and that was led by the public sector, according to the Commerce Department. When it comes to feathering their nests, Americans think IKEA is the best store to buy furniture, according to the latest ranking from Market Force, with a composite loyalty index score of 75 percent. IKEA beats off price retailer Home Goods, which scored 63 percent, and Target and Bed Bath and Beyond tied for the third spot. Only a 61% loyalty index score. I'm Rosa K with your money now on 1500 ESPN. Not only are you a good sport, but your velvety pipes are a hell of a lot better than Bruce Vale. Oh, listen, you boys. <laughs> all right, all right. We'll talk to you again. Thank Thanks. you so much. You bet. Sports Talk will continue right after this. The proximity of bodies mashed together in unison as it presents an opportunity for some casual contact. A gentle brush against a random buttock by accident. If you catch my drift, can you dig it? I knew that you could, as the kids say. In addition to the cavalcade of things fried and things dipped in batter, there's also a cloud of melancholy and a taste of the maudlin as we bid a fond adieu to Mr. Souchere and his band of garage logic cronies as they take a final lap around the state fairgrounds in the form we have known for so very long. Word on the street is that it shall remain in similar form as a podcast, which is good news. I myself am unfamiliar with the technology, being as I still embrace the words cassette and splendid. Anywho, that's the word from St. Paul. I'm on my way to my annual visit to the State Fair Haunted House, where one can enjoy being startled by ghouls, and one can also enjoy staring at chicks. Go Vikes. Oh my goodness! Did this air last week? I got it late from Tony, so I didn't get to uh, I didn't get to oh, air it. I, that I, is I, I genius! Wish. I didn't see it. <laughs> oh my God, he's got the pacing yeah. down. Oh, he's, yes. oh he's, that's just genius. How about the day that they had out there too, where they basically secured the entire block perimeter <laughs> around our own building? Yeah. yeah, I think he was over there sleeping on a bench oh. <laughs> <laughs> with a bottle in a bag. <laughs> no, wait, the bottle in the bag was in my hand. Yeah. Yep. By the yeah, way, right. by the way, <laughs> those work. those people don't think we're stupid enough to believe there were two hundred seventy thousand people there Saturday. I'm they? buying it. They don't think we're I'm that stupid. It. Yeah, we're buying it. I'd say they they I'd say they, they the Gopher football crowd they cheat by thirty percent. Yeah, these guys cheat by fifty percent. <laughs> I don't know. Fifty yeah. percent. Here's John Hyde. They count legs. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Joe. Uh, rain and seventy-three degrees. Twins Astros tonight in Houston. Trevor May will start for the Twins. Uh, he'll go an inning or two. Justin Verlander will pitch for Houston. Uh, some roster notes for the Twins. They are recalling right-handed pitchers Krista Young and John Curtis from Rochester. Also, veteran infielder Gregorio Petit. <laughs> they did announce over the weekend that Byron Buxton will not. Yes, September. No, oh, we got Gregoria. We got to test out Gregoria Petit, a 34 year old utility infielder. We have a question in the back of the class. Pat? Yes. Name the first year the State Fair crossed a million in attendance. Mm, 72. 19, I'm guessing. 1955. Really? 1,007,000. I was probably among that crowd, and my old man made me go through the chickens and the cows and the <laughs> pigs and everything before we got to the good stuff. How come people don't show up on Tuesday and Wednesday when it is wonderful out there? Because they work. Well, I last think. Tuesday we were freezing to death. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, it was a little chilly. I don't think I have always said that freezing. the non Labor Day Monday is the best day to what go out to the What was the state attendance? Yeah. What was yeah. the yeah. official number, Johnny? Uh, it was over two over million. Two million. Not sure. No record. I mean, two million know. forty-six thousand, I think. And then how many? Uh, well, what difference do you make? Because next year you can subtract seven. <laughs> I guarantee you, you can subtract tr- seven. Yeah, I'm going to give it a few years off. Yeah. <laughs> Vegas Golden Knights defenseman and former Minnesota Gopher Nate Schmidt. Wow, I'm very upset about this. We'll miss the first 20 games of the season after being suspended without pay for violating the NHL's performance-enhancing drug policy. Huh. 
Schmidt can take part in training camp but cannot dress or play in any preseason games. That suspension includes a mandatory referral to the NHL and HPA program for substance abuse and behavioral health. He'll be evaluated and potentially receive treatment. Both the Golden Knights and Schmidt issued statements objecting to the NHL's. Rules. What was he we taking? Don't know what it was. Huh? No, they're not they're down not. a Saint Cloud boy. You know. Yep. Yep. I don't, uh, here's the deal, though. Just like a uh, Dominican baseball player, he complained that he would, didn't know what he was taking, I guess. Or, or that what he, they're, they're saying, I didn't do it. So. Yeah. You know, not even the drought could keep people away in 1988. <laughs> uh, 1.6 million uh, <laughs> fair goers. You're almost caught up, aren't the, you? Uh, yeah, the almost. drought. I'm up to 1988. That and, uh, was my favorite summer today. ever, man. Yeah, you I was drought. playing a lot of golf then, and you never even had to look at the sky. You just went out, and then <laughs> no then you, skeeters. Too. Then you hit if you hit it anywhere near the middle, that ball just go bawong, bawong. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, the fairways were brown, oh, but that didn't matter. Chris, yeah. See if there's urgency in those callers. No, tell them to leave us alone. <laughs> <laughs> We don't call you at all at work. <laughs> you, don't you don't call, call us. us at work. Yeah. News notes from today. You know then. what? That motto got us fired. <laughs> yeah. Well, so, well yeah. we, yeah. yeah. And, and, and it happened again. Yeah. <laughs> The ruby slippers stolen from the Judy Garland Museum in Grand Rapids in August 2005 have been found. They were on the feet of Marjorie Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> the Minneapolis Division of the FBI and other agencies made that announcement this afternoon. The slippers one of several pair worn by Garland in the film The Wizard of Oz. Only four such pairs are known to exist. A release from the FBI said the slippers were found in a sting operation in Minneapolis earlier well, this summer. If four pairs exist, why does anybody give a rat's ass about this pair? <laughs> we got three more. Big Fr- deal. Francis. Yeah. We can afford the loss. Francis. Oh, hi there. I just want to let you know that back 15 years ago, they allowed anyone in with the, to the fair without a ticket. If you had a badge, if you're a political person, if you're a cop from anywhere in the world. Yeah. So the numbers back in the 50s and 60s probably were higher because they didn't count that. Now you can't get in the door. Even you two couldn't get in the door without having somebody pay for it. Oh, it's been like You're that right. for years. Yeah, All right. of the people yeah. that work out no, there they didn't buy a one. ticket. Yep. I got news. All the workers have. Yep. 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 Back yep. then they let anyone in if they had any kind of credentials. All right. Thank you. So I think the but numbers back then were higher. Just right. remember this, though. It's a nonprofit. <laughs> Somebody's getting a check. <laughs> I tell you what, they need to spend some money on those bathrooms underneath that ramp up to the yes, uh, grandstand. Right. Yeah. Wow. wow. Yeah. And peeling, the, peeling paint falling in my hair as I'm standing at the trough. On the other hand, on both ends, they have gorgeous bathrooms. Oh, the yeah. New ones, up they're the, just the bathrooms up on where Machinery Hill used to yep. be. Fantastic! Yep. Mm-hmm. You could shower in the urinal. Same at the International Bazaar. I told Bazaar. you, in all my Golden. years out there, the greatest improvement of anything at the fair was the Hubbard toilet. Yep. <laughs> no, I didn't go room. in there this year. Oh, yeah, I didn't either. Biffy, yeah. those, nice. those TV people, they look askance at oh, me. Oh, you don't they, like they, it. They kind of scare oh, me. Oh, I go trotting in there. I don't care. Yeah, yeah. look at me. Look at yeah. here. I'm yeah. going in here. Yeah. Uh, anyway, I'll never do that again. Back to the slippers. Uh, Jill Sanborn this afternoon, the special agent of the FBI's Minneapolis division, so they received new tips last summer that helped them to find the slippers. However, well, why, if they didn't sell them to somebody, or what? What? Why did they? Why did? Why were they there? I mean, I don't get it. It's also uh, they were in a museum, Pat, and they were pilfered. I know, but okay, this Garrison is two thousand five. This is thirteen years later. Well, the they, they didn't get the, hard on. they didn't get the tip until last year, so but, that's why the story. But we, are, did the did the do we know if the thieves are the ones that had possession of? Them we still? we don't even know. Uh, it's an ongoing investigation. Okay. That, that was the announcement this afternoon. Well, that's no kind they, of announcement. We still, want the answer. They're still John. asking for help from the public oh. in locating whoever you know took them. Oh, Tell the okay. FBI to go to hell. We <laughs> stop okay. caring. Wow. Yeah. All right then. Uh, Amazon is because <laughs> I like I like the shoes the witch wore. She was great, man. The, the Wait best. Trump gets wind of the FBI finding shoes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Amazon. You is think be- that's one of the things they're keeping from him? Yeah. <laughs> Amazon's become the second U.S. public company to cross the one trillion valuation Ooh, threshold. Apple just beat him by about a week, huh? Ten a days. month actually, month. one month. Okay. Amazon shares hit two. Uh, $2,050.49. I have any of that. Shortly before noon today, that brings the company's value around $1 trillion before declining slightly. Apple became the first $1 trillion dollar company last month. 
<laughs> Apple right now is worth one point one trillion dollars, and that should take care of our call today. <laughs> uh, the Apple stock is not something favorite. That you favorite will. Apple. You're out of time, Josh. Get off my air. I to talk to some sports-related knucklehead. Not b- go bananas for Apple stock. <laughs> You're right. There's never been a pun that was too funny for Josh. He loves the pun. Yes. But I also love winning stock. Yes. Wow. Stock. Yeah, this could be the final four. We're oh. calling this the final four. Oh, yeah. Here. The, uh, yeah. This could be a uh, are interesting. You, are you going to let him finish a thought? Or are no, you just going to keep that stopwatch? I will stop say watch. the final four is not something that you would invest in, <laughs> but players that are in the final four are invested in sports, Patrick. <laughs> okay, that's enough. John, you have more coming up? You know, uh, can I preview this a little bit? Please. Uh, you and I talked before sure. the show. Are you going uh, to the Hall of Fame? We've decided this week we're going to be pulling oh. stories out of the Hall of Fame. Two oh, or three boy. Oh, oh, boy. Good. Are you are some of the air? all-timers. Yeah. Oh, hey, uh, you guys are back on the air. You didn't actually select this, did you? I did. I punched it in there for you. Take it off the air right yeah, now. Okay. Take it off the <laughs> wow. air. Wow. Seems kind of harsh. Yeah. A little bit harsh. All right. Yeah. As I, I think, said, some I think stories. Pat and Joe uh, agree. Some stories from the rock. Oh, no, I love Van Halen. Oh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Shut up. Some stories from the uh, Story Hall of Fame. This okay. Is files we've kept. That's okay. correct. A couple having sex in a Georgia Waffle House parking lot was busted <laughs> Sunday, according to police. That's not the weird part of the story, though. <laughs> Loganville authorities said the woman was so drunk when she was busted. <laughs> How drunk was she? She tried to put a cheeseburger on her foot like it was a sandal. <laughs> <laughs> That's why that got sick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. The sex at the Waffle House parking lot wasn't the trick. It wasn't oh, enough. No. no. Oh my God. That's so romantic. Uh-huh. Assistant Chief of Police Dick Lowry said, I guess that would speak to her level of intoxication. Uh-huh. He said the fast food as footwear was a first for him as a police officer. <laughs> Rachel Gossett and Frank Lucas cited for public drunkenness and loitering. The two avoided an indecency charge because the pickup truck was in the back of the Waffle House parking lot and their tryst wasn't so obvious to the public, mm-hmm. according to Lowry. How did he find them? Mm-hmm. It was noticeable enough for someone to complain to police. That's the police ended up there. John, were they in the box or were they in the cab? <laughs> that I don't know, Kitty. That's, a, that'd be another reality show, man. As a pickup Waffle truck House. owner. <laughs> this is a <laughs> Waffle House. <laughs> yeah. I can see her slipping that pinky into a cheeseburger. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's my other question. Did she put her foot into the cheeseburger or put it over the top of it? Oh, the problem God. is when she tried to tie it with fries. That's <laughs> yeah. real. Uh, this one actually came from Wilmer uh, not too long oh, ago. A right. 40-year-old man was injured after trying to jump a homemade rocket oh, bike yes. off his house oh, roof. Yeah. Oh, oh, this yeah, made yes. me so happy yeah. when I heard this. Mm-hmm. According to the police report, the rocket bike... <laughs> he was mad, right? ...consisted of a pair of skis, <laughs> yes. a bicycle frame... <laughs> He's wild and coyote. <laughs> yes. ...and a motorcycle yes. exhaust pipe and was fueled with heat, oh. the antifreeze product. <laughs> oh, okay. The man... <laughs> I think this was Row the Boat Guy, as a matter of fact. H-E-E-T. That's that crap you throw in your gas to uh, prevent gas yes, line yeah. freeze-up, which we haven't had since the 70s. Yeah. I was going to say it was very popular when I was about oh, 18. Yeah. Right. Right. So I should quit was. buying that stuff? Oh, it was a huge scam, like yeah. everybody says. <laughs> The unidentified man fell 13 Why feet. is he unidentified? Well, when you do that, you should get yes. your name oh. in the paper. Well, and you're trying to market a product here. You would you're, want to think you'd want the promotion. This is hero status. Yes. Well, do we, wearing a cape? He, he, well, this is a guy that just went straight down. Right? Straight down. Yeah, right up the roof. He fell about 13 <laughs> feet. You know what he needed? He needed that giant rubber band. <laughs> do we know, do we remember, what was his destination? The moon, uh, man. Was it the moon? Oh, he was out of here. I'm done with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to take off from my mom's roof. <laughs> you guys can bleep it. <laughs> How old was he? Oh, we don't do it. A 40-year-old man. Uh, wow. He fell 13 yeah. feet. He hit a fence in the yard during the fall. <laughs> <laughs> when, re- 
When rescue personnel arrived... What are you doing in there, Ralphie? <laughs> Never mind, Mom. <laughs> but you're going to be impressed. <laughs> what did he tell the cops, John? When rescue personnel got there, he was back on the vehicle, if we'll call it that, pushing himself around the driveway with his feet, according to the... <laughs> We got a push started. According, <laughs> it's not working. Oh. According, according to the report, as he was pushing himself around the driveway, he was swearing and yelling about the pain. This, this is POS. <laughs> about the pain, he was a little. He was in a little pain. Oh. Yes, he was. He was in oh, pain. oh, I thought. Okay, somebody, somebody oh in Wilmer is listening, and they live near the neighborhood. <laughs> we want a little more information. That's on the this one guy. call we'll take. Yeah, sure. The right. one call. Oh my God! In Brazil, firefighters <laughs> called to a, thing. The firefighters <laughs> called to a bar to remove a drunk and belligerent monkey that downed a glass of rum and then oh. armed himself with a kitchen knife. Oh, that's fantastic. The local fire department in Patos Paraiba said they were called to a bar on a report of an aggressive monkey with a kitchen knife <laughs> who was chasing men around the bar. Mm-hmm. Fire Department Lieutenant Colonel Saul Laurentino said the monkey drank a glass of rum at the bar before he picked up the knife and started chasing men. Was he getting his car fixed across the street? <laughs> I'm a full believer in evolution, 100%. These guys are our cousins. I'm not kidding you. I think they're closer than that. Yeah. (laughs) Laurentino said it was a bar staff oversight that ended up with a monkey drinking the rum and taking the knife. Uh, Strangely enough, as he chased men around the bar, he left all the women in the bar alone. Locals, Locals captured video of the monkey using the kitchen knife to scratch at the bar's roof. The monkey was captured by firefighters, released back into the wild, but he was later captured a second time for acting aggressively toward residents of homes near the woods. Local authorities said they're now working to determine whether the monkey will be released again or taken into permanent who is, captivity. Who is the prankster that got to turn this monkey into a drunk? That's yeah, terrible, isn't it? Oh, it's <laughs> awful. I'm a, I'm a story late, but I was trying to uh, cue this up for the <laughs> rocket guy. Yeah. <laughs> and he just went... That's off the dunk guy. That's off the dunk guy. Hey, by the way, didn't Ted Cruz try to dunk and got about a foot? Oh, I don't know. I missed that. Where was he at? It was, uh, he was very short on the dunk. he tried to dunk, too. (laughs) Off of a trampoline? Mm -hmm. It was a little tramp, and he he got no air whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Uh, From California, a lot of things wrong with this story. A man whose wife bit him in the swimsuit area Mm -hmm. after an argument, after a rodeo. What what would Ray from St. Louis (laughs) Park say about that? Bit him Ouch. Bit <laughs> <laughs> him in the. Thanks, Ray. What type of foreplay is this? <laughs> <laughs> this is what I am not into. <laughs> you got to have a safe word, Ray. <laughs> <laughs> this is my safe word. Ouch. <laughs> Just like that. Stop. <laughs> His wife bit, bit him in the swimsuit. Three more days. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> man whose wife bit him in the swimsuit area after an argument after a rodeo says his only regret is calling 911 on her. Anthony Hill says he's I still. I that 911 call went, right? He's still healing. I have a problem. (laughs) I'm trying to remain calm. (laughs) Yet there is immense swelling. But but not the kind that I intended. (laughs) It is a different type. (laughs) Anthony Hill is still healing, says he's standing by his wife, Christina. Hill said he's supposed to be a fun night out at the Penn Valley Rodeo. He said an argument followed a series of stressful events in their lives, including the fact that Christina's ex-husband now lives with them. Hill wanted to leave early. She wanted to stay. When they got home, the argument continued. Christina's ex-husband tried to separate the two, and when both men went to hold her down, that's when she allegedly bit uh, his... Uh, mm-hmm. yeah. You realize okay. that I am not John, correct? <laughs> <laughs> but, but he says he's already made up with her, saying it's just okay. what they normally do, ah. except normally they don't call 911. Ah. Uh, the story ends... Remember I said there's a lot wrong with this story? Yeah. It ends with a very wrong quote from the hubby. Uh-oh. Yeah, He said, quote... 
I've assaulted her before in many arguments, wow. but we always work it out. Jeez. This time it went wow. beyond that. That's a good way to get arrested. Yeah. Wow. She can really take a punch. Yeah. <laughs> way to go, buddy. Are you going to save some more of these for the, the rest of the week? Oh, I have a whole folder oh, wonderful. full. Yeah, that's wonderful. Good. Wonderful. Right. wonderful. Thanks, Ray. <laughs> What do you have coming up? A Ray from St. Louis Park? <laughs> no, Ray's, uh, Ray's strictly a sports talk uh, caller. Uh, we're going to have uh, Tom Kelly mm-hmm. say Cyanor to Manager Kelly. And uh, we're going to have uh, Kevin Seifert on the NFL. And Jordan Bianchi, big news in NASCAR today. The Furniture Row Racing, which is one of the power uh, racing teams, is dropping out because they can't find a sponsor. Are you in agreement with the Twins not recalling Buxton? No, I am not in agreement with that. I believe that uh, they should come up and check out how that swing looks after he hit 350 the last three weeks. Maybe he's figured something out. There's, uh, We're worried about 2022 free agency when we don't know if he'll make it that if. If he's good enough by the end of 2021 that you're worried about how much money you're going to have to pay him, you should be happy. Right right now, right. He might not make it to 2021. You know, so I, I don't. I think it's stupid. Well, especially the excuses they're trying to make for doing it. So. It seems like he's being terribly coddled. 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 He's not being coddled. He's Protected. being. No, that's not it. 1500 ESPN is KTB. Same how many have. <laughs> Hey there, big boy. Let me tell you what really heats me up. It's the real man in you. The sweat, the grease, the dirt. The manly sense that no cologne could reproduce. Until now. If you want to drive your woman wild, try the new official cologne of Garage Logic, WD-40. With WD-40, you don't need a muscular body, sensitivity training, transplants, implants, a big bankroll, or lessons in love. Just splash on some WD-40 to bring out the sex kitten in her. It's all you need for the love life you've been longing for. One whiff and women swoon. You may find women you don't even know ogling and yes, even becoming obsessed with being near you. WD-40, the affordable love potion. Available at hardware and parts stores everywhere. WD-40 Cologne takes no responsibility for careless use of its product. Use in public places is not encouraged due to its dramatic effect on women.